Strap on your snowshoes and pack up some hand warmers. Today we're venturing to the frosty vistas of the Nordic lands to check out the most unique gemstones they have to offer. We'll take in the scenery of Sweden, Norway, and the rest while learning about the fascinating properties of several stones you may never have heard of before. Let's start with the finish. In Finland, you can check out the northern lights, forage for cloudberries, or get your inner Elsa on in a real-life snow castle where even the drinking glasses are made of ice. And you can find gemstones too. Valuable stones like diamond, sapphire, emerald, and jade have all been found here in recent decades. Finland is a land built on a solid foundation, maybe a little too solid. You see, the sturdy bedrock here presents a much bigger challenge for commercial prospectors compared to the more deeply weathered bedrock found in other parts of the world. Nevertheless, Finland is well known for one particular gemstone, a very special type of labradorite called spectrolite. A mixture of anorthite and albite, Labradorite separates into sub-microscopic layers as it cools and crystallizes. These layers play havoc with light as it moves through the stone, bending it and reflecting it to create different colors that shift as the stone moves. Typically, Labradorite's iridescence exhibits two or three strong colors, but this finished material was found to have a much stronger effect. It often features the entire spectrum of the rainbow. Spectrolite was discovered in the early 1940s in boulders along the Salpa Line. This was a fortification built during World War II to prevent a Soviet invasion. Consequently, Spectrolite's original name was actually the anti-tank obstacle stone. A little wordy. I think they probably made the right choice in changing it. True Spectrolite is only found in Finland and has become a prized collector stone, used in jewelry and sculptures, even building materials. Is it any wonder Finland ranks as the happiest country in the world? Finland's neighbor to the west is no slouch either. With free college, free healthcare, and IKEA, this is a place you may never want to leave. But long before the days of Volvo, Sweden's major industry was iron. The Vikings mined bog iron, the very first iron ore, from peat bogs in southern Sweden. Used in weapons, tools, and even ships, it was an essential ingredient in every good pillaging. Swedish ironwork continued into the Middle Ages, where several small mines helped farmers supplement their income. Material left over from the smelting, or separating the iron from its ore, was termed slag and often left in heaps nearby. Centuries later, a Swedish goldsmith happened upon one of these heaps deep in the forest. There he discovered a bright blue stone he called Burslagsten. This was created during smelting when portions of ore floated to the surface and were poured off as waste product. Unusual levels of silica give the stone a glassy luster, while iron oxide is likely responsible for its vibrant blues. Changes in the iron refinement process means new material probably isn't produced anymore. But what has been found is often hand cut into beautiful blue cabochons and sold internationally under the names Swedish Blue Slag or simply Swedish Blue. Pretty sweet, huh? Further west, and we're in Norway, the land of a thousand fjords. Norway's deepest and largest fjord is the Sonja Fjord in southern Norway. To its east lies the famous Kongsberg Silver Mines, which are a prized locality for native silver. Near here is the village of Saland, where in 1820, Norway's own national gemstone, Thulite, was discovered. Like tanzanite, thulite is a variety of the mineral zoocyte. It is colored a rich pink hue due to manganese and often streaked by patches of the white quartz that grows alongside it. Its name comes from the mythical island of Thule, which was referred to in ancient Roman and Greek literature as the furthest point north in the known world. Many believe this island was, in fact, modern-day Norway. While it doesn't take a journey to the ends of the earth to reach this stone, it does require a four-mile hike. The Thulite mines are in a remote area obscured by swamps and mountains. Large rocks are often lifted out via helicopter. 
From southern Norway, it's a quick train ride down to Denmark, the next stop in our Nordic Gem adventure. Here in the land of Lego and the Little Mermaid, you probably won't spot any cute red-headed fish girls coming in with the tides, but what you may see is amber. Baltic amber is said to wash up all along the Danish coastline. Amber season typically runs from autumn through spring as the winter months provide ideal sea conditions for loosening amber from the seafloor and carrying it to the beach. This golden huge gem was once part of a dense forest that grew over 30 million years ago. Similarly ancient are Denmark's glendonites. These are thought to have originally crystallized over 50 million years ago and were originally composed of icaite, a mineral that only forms at temperatures close to freezing. Over time, the icaite dehydrated and was replaced by the mineral calcite while maintaining its original form. This is what's known in gemology as a pseudomorph. Denmark is home to the world's largest glendonites, which often take the form of a radial series of spiky reddish-brown pyramidal crystals. Believe it or not, this imposing looking formation is sometimes called the rose stone and is even fashioned into jewelry. Many metaphysical properties have been ascribed to this rare gem. Perhaps the most interesting is the claim that it helps make a loving home and ensure a good family life. Hmm, I can think of one Danish royal family that certainly could have used one of those. Now, before you can say a futla ye akuto, we're off to Iceland. An island that is home to over 30 active volcanoes, Iceland also features many interesting crystals. And we're not just talking sugar cubes. Perhaps the most famous is Iceland spar. This is a unique form of calcite practically free from impurities making it nearly colorless and transparent to both visible and ultraviolet light. For centuries, its only known source was in eastern Iceland. This one mineral contributed heavily to science and history due to two amazing properties. First, it's a natural polarizing filter, meaning it can take in light waves and organize their vibrations in specific directions. Second, Iceland spar is extremely birefringent, meaning that when light rays enter the crystal, they split and take two paths to exit, creating a double image of an object seen through the crystal. It is thought that Vikings may have used the stone to find the sun and navigate through clouds and mist on their journeys from Norway to Iceland and even America. It was also used in early optics and early studies of light as a wave. Even today, it is being used in experiments to achieve actual invisible cloaking effects. It is justifiably the source of a lot of national pride. I hear it's a really bad idea to say anything disparaging about it around Bjork. Greenland doesn't have any violent pop stars that we're aware of, but it does have gems. In fact, some predict that one day, gem mining will surpass fishing as the nation's largest industry. So far, several commercial efforts have been made for mining gems like diamonds and rubies with varying degrees of success. But more importantly, it has Numite. What's that, you ask? Well, Numite is super cool. Like spectrolite, it's composed of super thin layers of two minerals. This time it's anthophyllite and gedrite. And like spectrolite, these layers bounce the light around in ways that create iridescence. This time, it's more of a golden glow, almost like flames of fire. It can also have metallic bands of pyrite and chalcopyrite. Still not convinced? Well, what if I told you that it is one of the oldest minerals ever discovered, as much as three billion years old? Wow. Okay, one last locale to go. Welcome to the Faroe Islands. These tiny islands off the coast of Scotland are considered part of Denmark, but not part of the European Union. They're the smallest and least populated Nordic land we've visited today. So what do they have to offer? Well, they have something called ferrolite. It's a variety of the mineral thompsonite named due to its locale. It forms as round spiky balls. It's a member of the zeolite group. Zeolites are aluminosilicate minerals that are affectionately known as molecular sieves due to their ability to selectively sort molecules 
based on a size exclusion process. Zeolites are used in water purification, nuclear waste processing, even clumping cat litter. Not too shabby. That's all we have time for today. Tell me, what did we miss, what would you like to see more of, and what did we mispronounce? Let us know down in the comments, and while you're there, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss our future episodes. Thanks for watching.